Hi, Anissa Coy here with Firehouse Education, and I'm here with this week's uh, question for our video column. And the question that came in, uh, someone asked me, doesn't directly have to do, I guess, with content cleaning and structure cleaning, but yet it has to do with the business. So I want to talk about it. It's a good question. So uh, what was emailed to me was someone asked about insurance and asked, you know, I have a carpet cleaning business and I do water losses, so I have insurance to cover all that. But what kind of special insurance, if any, do I need to do content cleaning and structure cleaning? So here's the deal. Um, number one, I'm going to tell you, check with your individual state. Okay, depending on the state you're in, there are rules pertaining to businesses. So for instance, I am in Washington State because I do cleaning. I do not do any contracting anymore. I just do the cleaning part. I have insurance that covers janitorial services. Okay, um, I also do consulting with water losses and coaching and that sort of thing. So I have a different policy that covers that. But for just my content cleaning and structure cleaning, I have a janitorial policy. Way less expensive than to say, hey, I'm a restoration contractor and I need insurance for that. Okay? So if you're not, if you're already doing water losses and you have that coverage, then that's good. You've actually got the most expensive part covered right there if that's the case. That is that and mold are the more expensive parts of restoration insurance. So for the cleaning, and again, I'm I'm gonna preempt this with this is for my state, those are my requirements, all right, based upon the licensing that I need to perform those services. So what you need to do is check with your state. Um, some states, even to do the cleaning, you are required to have a contractor's license. If that's the case, you have to be bonded, which I'm bonded as well, but you have to have a special bond and your insurance is more because you're a contractor. Okay, so there's more liabilities. So you wanna check that out. Um, something else that I'm gonna tell you, you definitely want on your policy, and I do have as well, is like a Bailey's coverage. And Bailey's coverage is where it will cover other people's contents that are in your possession. So let's say I'm cleaning Jane Smith's house, and I have her contents in my warehouse or <clears throat> in my storage facility, whatever and the, uh, they get broken into and stolen or a fire happens, God forbid, and they all burn up or uh, that sort of thing. My insurance, my Bailey's insurance will cover those contents because I'm liable because they're in my possession. So you have to make sure you have that kind of coverage. The other thing is, is we, it's not, we're not heavily equipment intensive on the cleaning side, but you should have some coverage for your equipment. Ultrasonic machine can easily, you know, run 15, 60, <coughs> excuse me, $1,000. So that's kind of a spinny piece of equipment. So you wanna make sure you have some coverage on your equipment. However, is your equipment, because it's business, is is your assets a recoverable cost value or are they depreciated? And if they're depreciatable, at what rate? So what the reason is, is some business policies, piece of equipment, once you've had it in business a year, it's only worth 50%. So, I mean, that's all they're gonna give you for it. So on some things like a DHU or air movers, that's not even worth having insurance on, right? So you wanna check that out. So to answer your question, um, there, in my state, there's not a special insurance per se, but I do have a policy, a janitorial policy for my cleaning and a Bailey's coverage when I have other people's contents in my possession so that I am covered on that. So you need to check with your individual state and what those requirements are, all right? The cool part about doing content cleaning, structural cleaning, is it's actually the lesser expensive part of restoration to get insurance for. So that's kind of cool. And it's the high profit stuff, so go figure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this week's column, and I hope that answered your question well. If you have any other questions about insurance coverage, please don't hesitate to email me at anisa at firehouseeducation.com, or please leave a comment below. We love for you to let us know what you think of the videos. Um, if you have any other questions, I'm always looking for um, new fun things to questions to answer and videos to do. So please be sure and uh, let me know. Uh, be sure and subscribe on our MacOnline.com for the e-newsletter web exclusives. Go under web exclusives. The website just changed. And subscribe to the e-newsletter if you aren't already. So. I will let you go with that. I thank you so much for watching the video and spending time with me. And uh, till next time, I will see you on the next video.